I got two words that might change your life, letting go. Now I know, I know, easier said than done, right? Hey, maybe you've heard on this channel about the power of letting go, or maybe you've heard from other people about the power of letting go, right? And you know, these emotions that you keep stored up inside of you that affect you on a day-to-day -day level, change your thoughts, change your feelings, how do you let go of them? If you're in a lot of pain, you got a breakup, you got a job change, you got people you know, pissing you off. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you a new technique that will show you how to let go. This is one you don't wanna miss. Everything that the mind experiences, whether it's real or imagined, sort of arises in pairs. There's a sense of duality. There's on and off. There's up and down. There's night and day. There's hot and cold. There's east and west. There's good, there's evil. So what we do when most people operate through life, they try and hold on to the good and resist the bad. But here's where we run into an issue. When you try and cling on to the good, sometimes that actually pushes the thing away. Take the simple example here of you want a relationship, you fall in love, man, she's a 10 out of 10. You are head over heels first two weeks, so what do you do? You wanna cling on to it and you wanna obsess over how to get them to stay. And what are you gonna project out to that person? Neediness, what pushes them away and sabotages the thing you want, the good thing, the obsessiveness with it. Wanting the good actually ruins it. Following, same thing with the bad. If we resist what's bad, oh, I'm not gonna look at it, not looking, not looking, I don't want that. It doesn't actually make it go away, it can make it worse. Sort of like bills. You leave them unpaid, they pile up, you get interest. They're more expensive because you didn't deal with it, not less expensive. Same thing with traumas and issues and shadow work that you're resisting, oh, I don't wanna do it, it's negative. I'm a law of attraction, a way out of that and just obsessively brainwash myself with positive, even though my deep trauma scars are the real things causing my pain in life, but I don't wanna look at it. You resist it and so it ends up getting bigger. Why am I telling you this? Because the main point here, and this will explain the letting go technique I'll share with you, is that it takes an enormous amount of energy on a day to day to think about everything as separate. Okay, I only want good, I only want what's good, I'm gonna push away what's bad. Separate, 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 separate. But from a macro perspective, when you zoom out, everything is unity and oneness. That you can't actually have the day without the night. You can't actually have on if there was nothing to compare it to, which is off. Good and evil at a certain extent, you want to go super macro there. Much more practical level, Alan Watts would call what we're talking about here the backwards law. He has a good sense of humor too, so he makes these kinds of ideas and whatnot uh, really fun to listen to. The backwards law, put simply, says that wanting to feel good all the time and doing everything to pursue pleasure is actually a negative event. Being okay feeling bad is actually a positive event. Put another way, if you try to float, Try really hard to float, you'll sink. But if you try to sink, you'll actually float. That's how you do it. You ever gotten in a pool or a lake or something, you jump in and you just kind of sit there. Well, you naturally start to float up if you don't panic. But as soon as you try to float and you've never done it before, how do people drown? They fall in the water and they panic, they panic, they panic, and that actually makes them sink or drown. Such is life. The main thing you're doing with letting go is to not resist. Okay, that's it simplified. Now this technique that we're doing, just like I've told you, you know, there's on off, there's that duality perspective. It takes an enormous amount of energy to put things in boxes, good, bad, I want this, I don't want this. What we're doing is not resisting, we're welcoming the whole. We're not trying to separate two sides of the same coin. There's a lot of power in accepting what is. Have you ever said to yourself, it is what it is, you know, and you've come to that inner state of peace where you finally stop resisting, struggling, and you just accept. That's powerful. And side point, we're not talking about this apathetic, depressed person like, yeah, I don't care, man, whatever, it is what it is. I'm 300 pounds, I'm in debt, you know, I, I don't have any friends, but hey, it is what it is, who cares? That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about that inner sense of peace of where for once, you stop letting your mind hijack the driver's seat and just take you down these roads going, roller coasters going, you know, 200 miles an hour. And what if this happens, this happens, this, this, this. And you say, it is what it is. And you stop resisting. You take a breath. You go, okay, now what? 
that's where you start to take your power back. And these techniques, the letting go ones, that's why we focus on them because they're so cool and they help you with that. Here's a technique. It's called holistic releasing. Okay, holistic releasing. You might want to write this down. If you're not taking notes already, you might want to go back and take some notes because I find revisiting why we do these things and all the theory behind it actually motivates you to take the action and do it. This technique is very simple, but very powerful. Simple does not mean easy. You can run a marathon. That is very simple. It's 26 point something miles straight, but that ain't easy. It's two questions. You sit with the thing, the emotion, the feeling, the story that's coming up for you, and you ask the first one, can I allow myself to feel as unhappy as I can in this moment? And then you go to the other side of the coin, and you ask yourself, can I allow myself to feel as happy as I can in the moment? And you think about this thing, and you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Now that's a very simple example, but you can insert any feeling or emotion or word there. For example, can I allow myself to resist blank as much as I do in the moment? Can I allow myself to accept blank as much as I do in the moment? Can I allow myself to love blank as much as I do in the moment? Can I allow myself to hate blank as much as I do in the moment? You're choosing two polarities and you're playing with this and you're going back and forth. Now I know, I know, I know, this sounds so simple, so ridiculous and almost pointless, doesn't it? It's almost just a tool to keep your mind occupied and go back and forth between extremes. And what you'll find is when you oscillate between love and hate, love and hate, you'll eventually end up in the middle, which is neutrality. And if you look at the scale of emotions right there, willingness is the first step to change, to raising your vibe. As soon as you get to willingness, you have surpassed fear, anger, guilt, sheer, shame, pride. Right when you're in those middle emotions, you actually have the ability to change. So just that act alone, if you're in a low vibe, doing this exercise where you're oscillating between two extremes, and I'll give you some examples here, brings you up into that state. And as soon as you're starting to feel like, ah, oh, this is pointless, like why am I doing this, whatever. You're, that's the process of letting go. You just sit with it. Take some more deep breaths, go back and forth. Let's just take the example of love. Can I allow myself to love this person who hurt me as much as I can? Can I allow myself to hate this person as much as I can who hurt me? Or feel as much pain or whatever duality you wanna use here. Both yes and no are acceptable answers. You are not judging your response to this. So if you say yes to, I'm angry at this person, yeah, I can allow myself to be angry. They, they made fun of my mustache. They said I look like an adult star from the 80s. Whatever it is, yes and no are both acceptable answers. I'll share a story with you on this because this will help put it into context, some ways you can use this. So I have my coaching program that's personal with me. It's six weeks on identity shifting. It's metamorphic. And a lot of the people, I'd say a third of the people, come to me when they're in a transitory time in relationships. Okay, they either want to attract one, they're getting out of one, they have all this pain, they just got broken up with or something. And one of my coaching clients shared a win. He was dating a woman for three months and everything was great. They were in love. He said it was one of his favorite relationships he had ever been in. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, boom, she ghosts him. Literally, no communication whatsoever. Not even a reply of like flakiness. She like fell off the face of the earth. She wasn't dead. He knew she was alive, but literally could not get in contact for whatever reason she stopped talking to him. And it crushed him. For months, he literally went through these scenarios in his head. Everything from she's cheating. She never loved me to begin with. She's with her ex. And I'll prove her wrong, whatever. And we gave him this one tool and what we're talking about and letting go and whatnot, which is the tools we kind of give in, in the program and whatnot and why he joined. He said, Clark, if I could just let go of this person and be all worth it, that's an easy ask. Let's help you out. After using techniques and letting go, he was sitting with the emotions itself. He wasn't judging them. He wasn't resisting them. He was just letting them be. I was looking at both sides. I feel like I love this person. I feel really mad at this person. I hate this person. He reached a place of neutrality. And one of the insights that he had that was really powerful is he realized the love he had for this woman was actually his to begin with. And he could use that same love on himself. He could give it to himself. He could extend it out. He could give it to others in the future. That just because this person went away, 
didn't mean that love had to go away at the same time. Just like spending a dollar doesn't take it away forever. The root word of currency is current, meaning to flow, and that's what it does. You give it, you get it, you give it, you get it, and that's what love is. That's letting go in a nutshell. It's powerful. I've used letting go on a certain extent. I didn't know these techniques at the time I was doing it, full disclosure, but if I did, I'd be like, oh, that's why it worked so well. And I can't even imagine like having these labels and having these techniques to where you can just go straight to it and this works, you're so much better off than I was. There I was, I was 30 grand in debt. I was in mom's basement, just graduated college. Girlfriend broke up with me, lost a job. I was 30 grand in debt. I had no clue what I was gonna do with my life all within like four months. So I took to YouTube, started posting videos to make a long story very short. Grinded my ass off day in, day out, posting like, if you've ever posted a video or done something, you know, your first videos you're putting like 10, 20, 30 hours into, and you're so excited, you're stressed out, you drink too much coffee, and they hit publish, and 50 people watch. 100 people on a good one. It's just devastating. So I was doing that for like six months, a year, with just no results, no traction. I started to think like, am I crazy? Is this just a pipe dream? Will I ever have 700,000 subscribers on YouTube and, you know, thousands of people that watch me or am I, am I crazy right now? And so what I did is a version of letting go. I flashed forward to the worst possible scenario. Hey, what if this doesn't work out? Can I live with that? And I was like, ah, I'd like it to work out. But uh, yeah, I guess I could get a job and, you know, a normal nine to five or something and more traditional or figure something else out. And then I flash forward to the best possible scenario. Could I allow myself to love this and everything to work as well as it can? And I'm like, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing this for. Oh, and I started to get excited, started to build up my motivation to take action more, regardless of outcome. Then I went back to the worst case and I'm like, could I accept the worst case and make that better? Well, yeah, and then, you know, I can make it better by getting a part-time job and supplementing my income. So that's what I did. And best case and worst case and best case and worst case. And pretty soon what you're left with is, it is what it is. I can't control the outcome like I want, like all those law of attraction and manifestation videos that people watch. I, that's the one undertone I don't like about a lot of them is that you can control the outcome. 100% is you and you alone. If you watch our content, the vibe I try to give off, and my intention at least, is that you're a co-creator. There's a lot of things in life you can't control. I think that you create with the universe and that the universe or God or whatever you call it has bigger plans for you if you're not getting the thing you want. Sometimes not getting the thing you want is actually a good thing, which is a much longer conversation than we have time to get into here. So let me know if you want that in the comments. My point is that it detaches you from the outcome of how things have to be. You get to accept what it is, kind of get much better results and you're gonna enjoy the process more. Holistic releasing, duality, some big ideas to walk away with. If you want more of these, you want some one-on-one -on -one help, apply for a coaching call down below for our identity shifting program, Metamorphic. I don't talk about it enough on here because the student results we're getting are amazing. So go down there if you wanna see some of them for yourself and get their own words, hear a little bit more about like the clients we serve and what they're going through and the wins they're getting. Uh, click on that link down below, scroll down, there's some stories on that page and whatnot for you. But we'd love to speak with you and see if we can help you. So feel free to book a call with me or my team and uh, we're happy to answer some questions and see if it's a good fit for you. Love each and every one of you. Thank you for being here. If you want behind the scenes, follow me on Instagram and until next time, stop settling, start living. See ya.